Hello, my name is Saffron and welcome to my channel. This is another episode of Nobody Asks, the show where I do things that nobody asks for. On this very exciting and special episode, I am taking you guys along with me while I race the Whistler Grand Fondo. For anyone that doesn't know, the Whistler Grand Fondo is a cycling event where participants start in Stanley Park and they basically take the Sea to Sky Highway all the way up to Whistler. It's 122 kilometers. I've done this race in the past. It's a super challenging one. I always have a really bad time while I'm doing it but feel very accomplished right after it ends. I'm actually looking forward to it this year. I'm hoping to get a little bit faster than last year. The first year that I did it I got like 559. The second year that I did it I got like 532 so anything under 532 would be great but at the same time I I don't know like every single day that you race it's gonna have its own conditions and its own situations going on so I just have to take it how it is so yeah let me take you along to going to the expo to pick up the stuff picking up the kits this year was actually super easy last year there was a huge line this year was just very simple I got to try a bunch of samples at the expo and look at me it was showing off the backpack when I got home I prepared my nutrition for the race and opened them so that it'd be easy to access Hello, let's do a little haul of everything that came with the bag. First of all, let's admire the bag. It's like a whole ass backpack. Like, isn't that crazy? I know you saw the shot of me at the expo. Nice stuff. Next thing that the bag came with, very nice water bottle. Looks like it probably can have like half a liter of water. So I think I'm gonna use this for the race tomorrow because my current water bottle is a little bit smaller. But yeah, here's like the race number. This has like the chip and stuff. Got some coffee beans here. Forecast coffee. Actually, that's near my apartment. That's so cool. And then like a Hornby Island uh, bar. It's the night before the race, obviously. It's like 8-11 right now. I should probably try and get to sleep at around 10. I plan on waking up at around like 4.30 to 5. I know it seems really early, but I do like to get up early before races like this to be able to pass a BM and also just eat and have it digest in time before the race starts because you don't want to be bloated and uncomfortable while you're racing. The goal would be to not do any bathroom stops the entire time that I'm racing. That's what happened in my marathon. I didn't have to stop to use the bathroom. I really don't want to stop to use it. That's kind of my plan. So I will see you tomorrow when I wake up. The morning was pretty successful. I got up, I made myself a little coffee, had some caffeine running through the veins and then ate some carbs. Hey friends, it is race day. So exciting. Now I just have to figure out uh, how I'm gonna pack all my shit into the jersey. We'll see half a bar every half an hour. Put that in the end pocket. Camera for vlogging. I am nervous about the race, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I kind of just want it to be started already so I don't have to like keep on thinking about it. Okay, so since it's September, even though it gets kind of hot during the day, the mornings are so cold, but we got out and we didn't have to wait too long at the race start. I felt okay going out. We started climbing up to Squamish and I was just doing okay. We're 25k in, things are going well. Feeling okay. Yeah, here we are coming at the KOM. Not happy. Hard part of the KOM is over. Wasn't as bad as I remembered. Doing okay. 47k in. Okay, so the fun part of the race is officially over. This is where it all starts to become uphill. Somebody needed an attitude adjustment. Anyways, got to 70 kilometers and it took me so long to get to 77 because there's just a, like a straight up long hill. It's so brutal, but after this point, I found it kind of goes more up and down. I feel like a six out of 10. You know, like I felt worse before, but I still don't feel like 100%. Like, geez. It's just always my back, man. It's always so painful. I was trying to catch all these little beer signs. I know at this time you last like year I felt way. a lot worse, so that's a positive. Oh my God, she made it past 100. Probably feeling like 5.5, 6 out of 10. I'm trying to breathe through this back pain. I only have like 21 kilometers left though, so I'm just trying to power through. This part of the race is so mentally hard because you're thinking you're in Whistler. Like you see that Whistler sign, but there's still so much to go. I feel like I've been filming with the most awful angles, but anyway, I have like 15k left. I just got my water filled and I just got to finish the race. I am like, I'm in pain, but it's not the worst. I'm just going to keep going. Almost there, right? Almost there, but lots of hills to get there. Come on, Sappy! Go, Sappy! <laughs> 
<laughs> let's go, let's go. I was speeding to the finish line, got a second win, and I was so happy to just get off my bike and be done with the race. I actually felt very emotional this time finishing. Then once I got out, got my medal, we watched my dad cross the finish line. Go, Brent! And then we just went out to the little grassy area. We got our food and our beer and just chilled out, very happy, and it was so hot out. Hello, it is the day after the race. I'm here with my little medal, which is very exciting. This is the third year that I've done it, but I'm so far trending faster every year. I shaved off about 15 minutes off my time from last year, which is really good. Um, last year I got 532, this year I got 516, so I am really happy with that. Like, it's, it's a good time. I ended up being top 20% of my age category, which was uh, women between the age of 19 to 34. You know, I can't complain with that. Obviously, I would have loved to have gotten under five, but I think that that's something that's achievable because I mean like 15 minutes to shave off, I think is pretty realistic in the grand scheme of things. And then also, if I look at the big picture, the first year that I did the Fondo, I did it in six hours. It was like 5.59 or something like that. So I was able to shave off 45 minutes from the first time that I did it. And I think that that's like, it's really good progress. Something that um, I found interesting about this race as well was that I had such a bad attitude for the first probably 50 kilometers that's like the easiest part of the race because you know from Vancouver until Squamish there's like rolling hills there's some tough there's some tough stuff there but it's overall like you'd go up and you come back down like the elevation as you can see is not that bad I just felt like crap and I can't really pinpoint exactly what was going on like I wasn't having like any major leg cramping I thought I fueled well in the morning I wasn't in like overall discomfort for the first 50 kilometers it was just like I was mentally in a really bad space and I was like fuck I'm gonna have to do this the rest of this race now and then at around like 60 kilometers when you're in Squamish my back was really starting to hurt and I'm like oh my fucking god this is gonna be the worst day ever like I am actually gonna have such a bad day today and then I had to kind of like check myself I was like okay you're at 60 kilometers you have 60k left you can either be miserable the entire rest of the way that is completely uphill or you can kind of deal with it in another way. And right after I finished the Grand Fondo in Okanagan, I watched this cycling video um, about the Tour de France and they were talking about how a lot of professional athletes, they don't necessarily try and dissociate away from the pain. They try and embrace it and try to, you know, breathe through it and it like work through the pain instead of just trying to ignore it. So then I was like, okay, like maybe I can try doing that with my back pain. Cause I do get pretty bad back pain when I'm hunched over the bike for that long, especially when you're going uphill. So once I started the ascent into Whistler from Squamish, obviously I felt like crap, but I was just like, okay, you need to breathe through this. Like you need the pain as a part of the process. Like as cheesy as it sounds, like at a certain point you just have to like repeat certain mantras to yourself so that until you believe it because you're obviously stuck doing something very miserable and painful. I was just like telling myself over and over again, pain is a part of the process, pain is a part of the process, it's temporary, like just over and over again to try and get to the end of this race because I felt like crap. And then slowly, I, I actually started to feel like a bit better. Um, when I was thinking back to how I felt about the race the year before, around 80 kilometers, I got into a really, really bad headspace. I was crying for the whole last 40 kilometers of the race. And obviously that's like, a pretty miserable experience but I was getting to those checkpoints during the race that I had reached before and I felt like shit and I got past them and I'm like okay like I don't feel great but I'm a 6 out of 10 I'm not like a 3 out of 10 or a 2 I, I don't know I think my mindset what really made a difference in my race and in the end like the entire last 50 kilometers of the race is all PRs for me like I did really well i was super strong in the second half so i kind of wish i had just had a better attitude in the first half and i might have you know gotten a better time but there's always next year and i regardless i'm still proud of myself but you know i i do like to um improve and i would like to have a redemption at this race next year yeah so that's all for me on this video i hope you enjoyed watching it overall this race is so much fun it's a good litmus test of how much i'm improving in my cycling 
and I do really like the celebration in Whistler afterwards. We have family friends there. We get to just hang out with them. It's always so fun to spend this time because my dad does it. My mom will meet us at the end and my boyfriend Turner, he comes and meets us too. Like it's just such a fun overall experience aside from the brutal cycling. So I am just really grateful that I was able to do it again. And all I can say is that I hope that I improve for next year and maybe get sub five. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.